Who was your favorite guy to play against? Myself. If I can really elaborate on why I said myself more so than another athlete, is that because a lot of times I had to battle with myself to keep challenging myself. You know, that to me was why I would say that the you know, biggest battle was, was myself. Because when you get to a certain pinnacle, you got to find some ways to keep going out there for 82 games. And you're hungry or you're full yet? No, you feel yourself getting full. Because each time that you win, it takes away a little bit of that hunger, you know, which um, is, is a challenge within itself. You know, it's a battle within the, 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 your mind to find a challenge to go to that same place that you've been five times before. You know, and that's hard, you know. Um, you know when people say, well, the first one was the hardest, no, the last one's the hardest because you're battling with yourself. At that time, they hadn't won. Uh, a lot of those guys have never won in terms of the, you know, world championship or something to that you know, magnitude. And um, so I knew it was going to take it take some learning uh, for them to understand that. That's where my role uh, became very vital uh, to lead and to give them that you know that that knowledge that they need. Uh, along with Phil, obviously Phil was you know the leader, but in terms of basketball leadership. When I say I led, I led based on, you know, physically, you know, I get out there, first one there, last one to leave, work on my skills. Uh, that was the leadership that I wanted everyone to see and then reinforce it with my voice when I felt the necessary need to do so. I think there was a lot of situations where people were, you know, somewhat critical in terms of the way that I perceived it. And, you know, but I had a mission, you know, I wanted them to understand what it took to win. Did you sometimes wish that you didn't have to be like that? Yes. Yes, but you know, as a leader, you you know, you sometimes you don't you, you're not going to be well liked. Uh, you're not going to be you know, but you have to pull them along, um, you know, because you know you've experienced it, you understood it. Uh, the other side of that road is success, and I, I think that you know the, the, the gratification would be there once we get over that hill. And uh, I felt that, and and I can sense some of that coming from from my teammates. But you know, the thing is, is that we. For us to be successful, someone had to do that, you know, especially from a leadership. Winning has a price. Um, and the thing is, is that, you know, I, I wanted to make sure they were prepared for the worst, you know, especially in competition. And, you know, there were, I'm pretty sure there were times they were not happy with me. Uh, I think if you look back now, I'm pretty sure they are, you know, based on how we, we achieved and the successes that we, you know, we were able to to overcome. You would assume that everybody had the same mentality as I had, and that every day, the first one in the gym, last one to leave, you know, uh, you live within the moment. You know, you strive to be, uh, strive for perfection each and every time you step on the basketball court. But unfortunately, everybody don't have that same mentality. Uh, and if they did, then it makes my job so much easier. It's like looking at, a, you know, a mirror of 11 or 12 people, you know, and unfortunately, the world is not made that way. Um, and you know, sometimes you have to push, pull, or do whatever you need to uh, to get over that hill. The professional league of multiple teams, when I say a league, you want to be able to have competitive balance. And if a player or an individual can choose based on the city to go to whatever we expect the team that he wants, you're going to have some you know, discrepancy in terms of the talent and the competitive nature. So if everybody wants to go to Chicago, you only can have 12 jobs in Chicago. Chicago is going to get all the best players. What about Dallas? What about Washington? What about these other cities? Detroit, you know, Indiana, where they may not be, they may not be metropolis of cities, but they still have passion for the game of basketball. And you, you're starting to see a little bit of it now to where all the stars are starting to gang up and go on one team. Uh, I think it's going to hurt the overall aspect of the league from a competitive standpoint. You're going to have just one or two teams that's going to be great, and the other 28 teams are going to be garbage. I mean, you know, sports is a, is, is, is a tool that teaches, you know, and it teaches you bad things. It can also teach you good things. It's how you perceive those things. I've looked at every experience that I've had, negative and positive, and, and taken that as a positive. You know, if I wouldn't change anything because I think it would alter some of the other things that have happened. You know, so when I look back, I can't say that I've had any bad things happen. Sure, I mean, you don't want bad things to happen, but you deal with bad things. You can't have good or you know, without bad.
What made him so special as a marketing icon is that he was natural. Today, when everyone really tries to be like Mike, they're trying so hard to invent a persona. I think that people see through that and it doesn't stand the test of time. Be true to the game. Because the game will be true to you. If you try to shortcut the game, then the game's gonna shortcut you. If you put forth the effort, you know, good things will be bestowed upon you. You know, that's truly about the game. And in some ways, that's about life too. Because limits, like fears, are often just an illusion. Thank you very much. Thank you.